This is the cadaveric picture showing the sagittal section of entire head and neck. And here they have marked the location of tonsil, where the tonsil is exactly present. Till now, we might have seen only the hard palate. In this section only, you can see the soft palate. They have marked even the soft palate. In this picture, you can see the two constrictor, that is the superior and the middle constrictor of the pharynx. Next is the surface anatomy of tonsil, which is very, very important clinically because you should know where exactly the tonsil is present. So, an oval area 1.25 cm above and in front of the angle of mandible marked in the parotid region. So, there is a picture showing where exactly the tonsil is present. Coming to the blood supply of tonsil, so ton which is very, very important, tonsil is supplied by the branches of external carotid artery. So coming to the branches of external carotid artery, there are five arteries which is going to supply the tonsil. The first is the tonsillar branch of the facial artery, which is the main supply to the tonsil, tonsillar branch of facial artery. The next is ascending palatine branch of facial artery, ascending pharyngeal branch of external carotid artery, dorsal lingual branch of lingual artery, and the descending palatine, otherwise known as greater palatine branch of maxillary artery. In this picture, you can see the blood supply of the tonsil. You can see a big artery, which is the external carotid artery, and you can see the branches of external carotid artery, the facial artery, which is giving the tonsillar branches, which is supplying the major supply to the tonsil, ascending palatine artery, which is also a branch of facial artery, and you can see the lingual, lingual artery, which is giving dorsal lingual branches, ascending pharyngeal artery, which is a branch of external carotid artery, and you can see the greater palatine, otherwise known as descending palatine artery. So, these are the five arteries which is supplying the tonsil. All are branches of external carotid artery. Next is the venous drainage of the tonsil. So, the tonsil drains into paratonsillar vein which we have seen already. This paratonsillar vein which in turn drains into common facial vein and the pharyngeal venous plexus. So, there is a picture showing the venous drainage of the uh, face. So, this picture is the venous drainage of the face where you can see the common facial vein. And this common facial vein will finally drain into internal jugular vein. Yes, in this picture, you can see the paratonsillar vein which is present in front of the pharyngobasilar fascia. So, the uh, blood from the tonsil will drain into this paratonsillar vein. This paratonsillar vein will pierce the superior constrictor muscle and will drain into the pharyngeal venous plexus which is present behind the buccopharyngeal fascia. And another drainage is it will drain into the common facial vein in turn drains into the internal jugular vein. Next is the lymphatic drainage of the tonsil. So, the lymphatics from the tonsil will pierce the superior constrictor muscle and comes and drains into the jugulodigastric node that is the, the node of for the tonsil. This jugulodigastric node is one of the cervical lymph node. It is located just below the angle of the mandible. So, this is this jugulodigastric node is otherwise known as tonsillar lymph node. The next is the nerve supply of the tonsil. So, the, the nerve which supplies the tonsil are, is the glossopharyngeal nerve as well as lesser palatine 
which is a branch of sphenopalatine ganglia. This glossopharyngeal nerve, which we have seen already in the tonsillar bed structure, is supplying the tonsil. And in this picture, you can see the sphenopalatine ganglion, which is located in the sphenopalatine foramen, the round structure that is the sphenopalatine ganglion. From the ganglion, you can see the lesser palatine branches, which is going to supply the tonsil. So these are the two nerves which is supplying the tonsil. Next is the applied aspect of tonsil, which I have said already, it is very, very important and most common condition. The tonsillitis is very common in uh, school going children. And this tonsil is, uh, these tonsils are frequent sites of acute infection. And you can see a picture showing normal tonsil and another picture showing inflamed tonsil. So this is how the uh, tonsil will look, the normal tonsil as well as the inflamed tonsil. Next, we are going to see about the applied aspect of tonsil, which I said already. Applied aspect is very, very important and it's very common condition. The tonsillitis is very, very common. And these tonsils are the site of acute infection mainly in school going children. Here you can see two pictures, one showing the normal tonsil and another picture showing the inflamed tonsils. This is the picture of acute follicular tonsillitis where the infection has spread into the crypts. The crypts is filled by a yellowish purulent material. So next is the surgical management of tonsillitis. It's nothing but the tonsillectomy, that is removal of tonsil. So after tonsillectomy, most commonly there will be lots of bleeding, the hemorrhage. So bleeding from the tonsillar fossa after tonsillectomy most commonly is due to the damage of paratonsillar vein. So now you should think where the paratonsillar vein is present. It is present between the capsule as well as the tonsillar bed structure, the region where you are going to resit. Exactly there, the paratonsillar vein is present. So, hemorrhage is very, very common. Bleeding from the tonsillar fossa after tonsillectomy is very common. 